Hi, I'm Neha. I got to play pro tennis and travel around the world for six years. After that, I graduated from college and moved to New York. Through these awesome adventures, I learned a lot about the body, mind, and practical ways to improve myself. I'd like to share them with you. Welcome to Neha Shows. Hi guys, uh, I've got a lot of requests asking me what it's like to be on the pro tour. Uh, what are the pros and cons of being a professional athlete? So I thought I'd put together a small interview with some of the questions and uh, let's get to it. How do you start playing tennis professionally? It's a good question. So you start out by uh, trying to get ranking points uh, on the ITF circuit. These are usually $10,000 or $25,000 prize money tournaments. They have women's and men's events. To enter into one of these, oftentimes a 10,000, you enter into the qualifying. And if you get into the qualifying, you have to win four matches plus a first round main draw match to get one point. When you've gotten three points, you get a ranking. Now the rankings usually start around 1,100 or 1,200. So just because you have a ranking doesn't really mean much. You've got a long way to go to really start making money. What is life like on tour? So, the tennis tour is a grind. It's not as glamorous as you think. Uh, life on tour means you're waking up, you're practicing, you're waiting around for matches, you're waiting around in hotel rooms, you're waiting around at airports. You're basically going from hotel to airport to tennis court and back. Um, it's not really travel in the luxury, glamorous sense. Um, you know, you're trying to really find what works for you while you're on tour who's your best team, you know, coaches, parents, and trying to manage all that while performing at your best. A life on tour can be difficult because there's so many different variables from tournament to tournament, from weather to location to time zone change, food, culture. So you're really trying to keep your variables um, at a minimum and you focus all of your energy on performing. So the lifestyle's not that great. You have to find ways to entertain yourself with as little energy expenditure as possible. And you really have to be your own best friend. So your mentality is, um, is very competitive. You know, you want to be, you, you don't want to give anything away because you are, you're competing against everybody else by yourself. There's no team. You're not playing with other players. You're playing by yourself. And any other player that you meet along the way could at any time be your opponent. So your mentality is, um, you know, for lack of a better word, kind of recluse. You, you want to stay within your group. You don't want to let too much information out. Um, and you have to be really confident because you're going to lose probably once a week unless you're winning the tournament back to back to back. You have to learn how to lose and quickly get up from it and get to the next uh, tournament or match. So the mentality is, um, you know, it's very, it's an endurance game and you have to kind of stay within yourself um, and not, tr not try to seek out others for help or support. So it does take quite a strong uh, mental fortitude to compete on the tour for a long period of time. <laughs> what sort of sacrifices do you have to make? I think the better question is what sacrifices you don't have to make. Uh, you have to sacrifice a lot to be a professional athlete and to be a tennis player especially. You're, you're traveling 30 to 40 weeks out of the year and when you're not traveling, you're training very hard. So you're missing birthday parties, you're missing uh, anniversaries and New Year's and Christmas. You're missing a lot. Uh, you have to sleep early, you have to eat well, you have to eat right. And you can't really spend your time uh, out and about. You need to conserve your energy, even when you're training. So there's a lot of lifestyle um, changes or sacrifices that have to be made. Also financially, you know, you, you're taking a really big toll on, on yourself or your sponsor, whoever it is that is investing in you. So that's a very big sacrifice. Uh, but all in all, I think the biggest sacrifice is that of, of discipline, of being able to cut out what is not important and uh, you know, able to really see that you're playing the long game, that your rewards will come in 5, 10, 15 years, not tomorrow. That's probably the biggest sacrifice. Yeah, so like I said, you know, it's a big sacrifice financially. Um, tennis, being a professional athlete costs a lot of money. Think about one trip to even a, a domestic location. You're talking about a hotel, food, 
uh, training expenses, equipment expenses. So you're looking at the hundreds of thousands of dollars to train and also compete on the tour. Do you have a team? So as a tennis player, since you are competing individually, unless you're a doubles player, um, you have to create your own team. And this team doesn't compete with you, as we all know, but it's, it's a team that helps you to play your best, whether that's your coach or your parent or a combination of coach and parent and fitness trainer. Uh, you are the CEO of your brand or of your game. So you have to make the decision who you want to hire on your team and who you want to trust. And if you're able to create really good relationships with coaches and your parents or whoever it is you choose to decide that's going to go with you on this journey, uh, that becomes your team. And that team is very different from other sports leagues where they're buying and trading and, and, and uh, selling players. You, you need to keep this as close-knit as possible so that you can develop trust and confidence in your team and they can help you excel on the court. Do you make friends on tour? Well, I was lucky to have my elder sister Shikha with me and we were best of friends. But it's also really hard to on the women's tour. Uh, we're not a very friendly bunch. Again, you're playing against um, your opponent that could be your friend in the next match or the next tournament. So you, you never really want to uh, develop deep friendships just based on that. But also, um, the tennis tour isn't very friendly. Parents aren't friendly, coaches aren't friendly, everyone keeps to themselves, and they're all trying to dominate you or give you some sort of a you know, intimidation by not talking to you. So uh, unfortunately, like the men's tour is, is quite friendly, the women's tour is not, and, and you'll find it very difficult to make real friendships. What are the rewards? Yeah, there are a lot of them, that's a good question. Uh, you know, first of all, the discipline and determination and just overall mental stability that you gain uh, from being a professional athlete is unmatched. When you are applying this later in life, life just gets easier. You know, waking up at 9 o'clock in the morning or 8 o'clock in the morning for a 9 to 5 job just becomes a lot easier because you've probably been up much earlier than that. You also gain um, a lot of maturity at a very young age. You learn a lot about people and about yourself. You also get to travel the world, which was uh, my personal favorite reward that I got. You might not always get to sightsee in the way that tourists do, but you get a really deep sense of the culture and the type of people that are, are in each country that you visit. Another big reward is that you, you know, monetary gains. If you do well on the tour, you do make some money. You also get some fame and recognition, which always feels good when you're working your butt off on the court and uh, people are clapping for you. The reward also, I think for me, which is uh, something very special that athletes have, is you get the biggest high in the world. Um, obviously, I don't, I don't really take drugs, so I don't know what the biggest high is, but I would guarantee you that playing um, in a stadium with a crowd full of people cheering for you, or maybe even jeering from you, is the biggest high in the world. It is the most fun thing you can do, and nothing else in the world will ever match that fun that you have. I think another big reward is uh, the pride and uh, sense of honor you have playing for your country or for your people uh, and having people recognize you as you know, an Indian sportswoman or an Indian American or an American sportswoman. I think that that is um, something very honorable and it's a very, very big reward to represent your country or your nation or your people. I'd say the last reward is, uh, you know, with yourself, to know what you've accomplished and what you've been able to achieve. And knowing that going through the rest of your life, um, you know, trials and tribulations become much easier because you know that if you put your mind to something, you can achieve something. Uh, and I think that's the biggest reward. How did I prepare for life after the tour? That's a very good question. Um, I was very lucky to have parents that have a very, um, a very strong commitment to education. And so while I was on the tour, it was very important for me to um, maintain my studies. I started playing my first professional tournament at 14, but alongside I was doing homework every night in the hotel room or wherever we were traveling or when I was training to make sure that I got good grades and that I really had a good education base. 
I also got into Princeton um, and did my freshman year at 16 and was able to take a leave of absence before I went on the tour. So I knew that college was an option and waiting for me when I left the tour. And it was indeed a really big challenge to go from a six year leave of absence, being a professional athlete, to going back to an elite institution like Princeton with such competitive academics. But it really helped me when I was on tour to know that I had a great plan B um, ahead of me or a next step after tennis. So I think it's very important to focus on your education because after you are an athlete, uh, you have a lot more options for what you want to do in your life. And I know that you're not just a tennis player, you're a whole person with tons of interests. So having that education background will really help you to figure out and have the option to dive into those different passions and interests later on. I hope that this helped and if you guys have any more questions feel free to comment below or send me an email.